Hello, how are you doing? Guys, in this episode, I'm doing the kibash. First time in my life. So, without further ado, let's have a look at the piece I had to tackle. I know, I know, you're gonna say a chair again, but well, I had it and I had to do something to it. As you can see, it's not in a bad shape. It's a bit, it's a bit wobbly, um, outdated. Okay, and by the way, probably you don't see it here, but this is a miniature. It's like you know, for kids or something. So yeah, I had to do something to it and fast. And I decided to go with the coupage. But don't let me get ahead of myself, and just let me walk you step by step through all this. I started my repairs by checking if simple tightening of the screws would do the trick. And it did most of the time, but there were a few um, places where I actually had to use some wood glue. And that was pretty much it in terms of repairs. And I'm also super excited to tell you that this chair is another project uh, from the series of collaborations with Cardiff Store. Yes, yet again, they're my partner in crime. And if you were ever around Alicante, Spain, well, you need to go and check them out. They've got really, really good second-hand -hand furniture. They're a really, really nice dress store. Anyway, let's get back to the business. So, um, after doing all the repairs, I quickly scaf sanded the piece, cleaned it, uh, put a coat of a clear matte varnish for adhesion, and as you can see here, I'm using um, Monto's chalk paint in this very springy, greeny color that is like, wow, I absolutely love the color. And the color here is not a coincidence because it was inspired by the challenge posted on the Facebook group. The theme was green with envy. So, I green away. <laughs> In total, I gave the chair three coats of paint. And because it's easier for me, and I've seen that many YouTubers do the same thing, I started my very first coat with the chair upside down just to make sure that all the parts of the chair that are hard to see when the chair is standing in its proper position, um, I wanted to make sure that all those spots were are very well covered with the paint. So that's why I'm starting with the chair upside down and as soon as I've got it all covered then I'll put it back up and I'll paint uh, the rest of it. And here comes the fun part. I laid my hands on Mod Podge. I decided that that's gonna be uh, my glue to glue the decoupage onto, onto the chair. Uh, here in Spain you can use uh, for example, special decoupage glue uh, by La Pajarita, or you can simply use white wood glue by Thais, for example. If you're interested, I'll link all the products in the description below. So, anyway, again, back to business here of what I'm doing. So, I'm brushing on a very generous amount of Mod Podge, in case I don't want to run short. And I'm placing on it pieces of my decoupage. Uh, these are napkins from IKEA. I cut out uh, just the uh, roses that are red because there were different colors on it. And I'm doing uh, decoupage out of pieces of the napkins. You could be using a whole napkin straight away. However, my point here was to use only a specific part of the napkin. So I was I spent quite a lot of time cutting all those red roses out and then putting them as a dry fit on the chair to see if I like the design I'm making. And then I started um, gluing the whole thing on. Here's the layout of my design. So now what I'm doing is putting up a piece 
smearing a lot of glue underneath and then putting the piece down it's just i didn't want uh, my design to um, be altered in any way so i was going bit by bit and i'm telling you um, if you decide to do it like me make sure you've got a lot of time and a lot of patience because it takes quite some time to uh, spread out the glue to make sure that each piece is in its place um, you know putting them down making sure that every part of the piece of decoupage you're putting down is uh, glued to your surface and uh, yeah that as I said that takes a lot of time and a lot of patience but as I said it was uh, fun nonetheless especially when I started seeing uh, the outcome that was real real fun for me as you can see I'm using my white glue on top of the decoupage paper as well as I want to uh, I want it to act as a protective barrier and now after laying my whole design out and gluing it I saw that there were some spots where too much of the green paint was showing off so what I did is I cut out um, some of the leaves from um, from the napkins and I just glued them into place to make sure that uh, my design looks really nice and it looks as I wanted it to look when my design was done I covered everything with a coat of uh, with the coat of glue and I left everything to dry overnight what I did the next day was first I scaf sanded everything including my um, decoupage design uh, I wanted to uh, age it a little bit uh, and apart from that because that was my first time I wanted to make sure that there are no places where um, I put too little of the glue so here you see me uh, just patching up um, places where uh, the glue wasn't holding very well so I'm um, uh, fixing the design again and again using the same the same strategy I'm putting glue uh, then my then my napkin to finally let it dry overnight again I mean you can definitely um, leave it to dry for a shorter period of time However, I personally like to let it cure overnight. Just, just that's my personal preference. Okay, as just um, in terms of glue, I don't like rushing anything. Um, as I said, that's that's personal preferences. But definitely, you don't have to leave it overnight. Uh, you can do it. Um, you can do it. Um, Oh, depending on your glue, uh, definitely it's written on the package how long um, how long do you have to leave it till it's dry. Usually it's an hour. But as I said, I always leave this kind of things to dry overnight. So this is the varnish I'm going to be using. Uh, it's by Monto, uh, matte, totally matte. But before I'm going to do that, I am going to use uh, 1500 uh, grit sandpaper just to go over uh, my decoupage area. I need to tell you that before, and I haven't got it on tape, but uh, before I got to this point, I slightly distressed the chair and I am very gently going over uh, the, the decoupage I just want to make sure that it's um, as smooth as it can be and I'm also making sure that nothing is peeling off anymore so it was sealed before with Mod Podge now I'm just gently uh, sanding it to make it as smooth as possible uh, then I'm going to clean it and I'm going to use uh, the matte varnish to seal the whole piece Using the same 1500 grit sandpaper, I sanded um, the varnish in between coats 
you can ask us like why 1500 well because that was what i had at hand i normally use 500 grit and i noticed that this is i mean that's again my personal uh personal experience there i like one uh, sorry 500 grit um as the smoothing paper in between coats of varnish however as i said this is what i had at hand so i was using 1500 but using uh, 500 grit would be just as fine after using uh, sandpaper of, of course i uh, cleaned the piece with uh, a damp cloth and the chair got in total three coats of varnish i applied the varnish with a sponge because i found that one the easiest way to get into all the nicks and crannies and difficult spaces and well ladies and gentlemen that's pretty much the end of the ride so here's the before and here's the after okay i don't want to brag but this is one hell of a transformation <laughs> like really i am super happy at the outcome how nice and bright and happy this chair is it was you know sad and dark when i got it and it's wow i really really love it and my journey with decoupage was brilliant so i hope guys you like the chair as much as i do and guys if you made it till here and if you find it that i deserve it please like subscribe and comment that means a great deal to me and to my channel see you in the next one